Hey art nerds, I'm back at you with another watercolor chat. It's been a while, hasn't it? So in real time when I'm working on these, I am currently working on Lilliputian Living. It is October, so those are kind of taking up the majority of my day. It's gotten a little bit harder to work watercolor paintings like this one in. This painting is inspired by rose hip tea. Rose hip tea is a wonderful source of vitamin C, and if you enjoy floral and fruity flavors, you would probably enjoy rose hip tea. It can be a little tricky to find here in the US. Uh, the brand I buy is actually a Russian brand that I get through Amazon, and it's quite good, but it is a little bit acidic, and it's not as floral as I would like. But some of the Turkish rose teas that use a rose syrup are very delicious and if I could get a hold of that rose syrup or learn how to make it I would be drinking that on the regular. So to begin this illustration I wanted to start with some wet and to wet on the wild roses. Something a little less controlled. Today I'm painting in a Canson XL watercolor sketchbook. It's the same sketchbook that I've used for all of the watercolor chats in this series and I think we're on the sixth one now. So. I've got two more drawn and ready to paint. I just need the time to actually get around to them. But I've really enjoyed working on this series with this working on this series with you guys, getting a chance to just kind of let loose and talk to you guys a bit more and uh, share my art in a different light where it's not so beat by beat tutorial. I have gotten some requests for some longer form watercolor tutorials again. So we may have a watercolor live stream in the future. Keep an eye on the community tab if that's something that interests you, but it would be a great opportunity for any of you who have any questions at all about my process to be able to ask and receive demonstrations in real time. So with almost all of the other watercolor chat videos, I try to pick a couple of hero colors that um, are kind of like the most important colors for this illustration. So one of the two hero colors is Magello Compro's Rose. That's all the pink in the background. It's not quite a hot pink. It's not an opera rose. It's a little less fugitive. And frankly, it's a little more blue, a little more muted. It's not quite as fun as opera rose, but it will hold up to the test of time a bit better. For the lighter pink, I'm using Holbein's Brilliant Pink which is a more opaque pink and does require some special handling. I like to, in order to mix it a little bit darker, I like to mix in some of the compost rose and that gives us a darker shade of the brilliant pink. So you'll be able to find links to those colors down in the description below, just in case you've fallen in love with them yourself. So for this illustration, I wanted something inspired by like a garden party or going out for a tea date. Now, growing up in more rural Louisiana, we didn't really have like tea parlors or tea shops where you could go and you could have like a set tea experience. Uh, the first time I had formal tea was at the Griffin Tea Room in Savannah, Georgia when I was attending SCAD. And you know, I always thought the words clotted cream sounded really, really gross, but clotted cream is actually delicious. And uh, I can't really get it around here because it'd probably be pretty good on New Orleans style French bread, but I can't seem to find it. So that might be another thing I have to learn how to make. How delicious would Turkish rose tea be with like just a simple French style bread with some clotted cream spread on top and maybe like strawberry preserves or raspberry preserves. That sounds pretty good. So it's not like when I was a kid, I know some girls, uh, their mothers will take them out for like tea party birthdays. Uh, didn't really have a lot of birthdays actually. So um, the tea party birthday was really not in my, in my experience. But ever since I started reading shoujo manga in high school, I wanted to have like a tea date with friends where we got all fancy and we went out and we had tea and we enjoyed each other's company. And you know, I haven't quite been able to make it happen the way I envision, in my, envision it in my head, but you know, maybe someday, there's still plenty of time. So I'm utilizing a technique in painting the leaves that I use pretty frequently when I'm painting florals and I want really bright, fresh leaf leaf 
colors. So I'm using Magello's Marine Blue. It's a really cool cyan kind of blue. It kind of reminds me of like a pool. And I'm underpainting. And then I'm going to use either a bismuth yellow or an Aeolian yellow on top of it to get that optical mix of green. So spoiler, for some reason, the Canson XL was behaving a little funny the day I painted this and it, applying the a wet wash of bismuth yellow ended up reactivating all the colors. So it didn't have quite the intended effect, but I did get this really interesting kind of mottled thing that worked really well for the leaves. So, you know, I didn't hate it. And I also want to mention that this video has been time-lapsed multiple times. Um, so the way I time-lapse things, because I do a lot of my editing on my phone, spoiler alert, is the, the most you can speed it up is times two. So I <laughs> sped the original for this up by two, then again by two, and then again by two. Now, that might be times eight, but uh, or times six, but I think it is actually times eight. See, the way you calculate um, how things are time-lapsed is a little, a little above my pay grade. So on top of the marine blue, I'm using some Windsor Newton indigo. And the indigo in the half pans is a very cool indigo, even cooler than like blue jean color. Like, and, and I say blue jean color because blue jeans are dyed with indigo. They're dyed with indigo made from the wood plant, or at least they used to be. They may have a synthetic indigo. But I am literally looking at my jeans right now and they're more of like a dark uh, ultramarine than they are like a dark cool blue. But what I really like about Windsor & Newton's Indigo is it's this really dark cool blue that's really nice for floral shading as you can see here. And here is that really wet loose wash of bismuth yellow. I probably should have mixed it a bit more saturated because it was a little bit weak the first go round. And when you're working on cellulose papers, it's really beneficial to just try to accomplish as much as possible in as few layers as possible because cellulose cannot necessarily take a whole lot of layers. So we moved back to Louisiana towards the end of August and now it's the middle of October. So I guess you could say we've been living here for two months now. Joseph and I both grew up here, but I spent the past seven years in Nashville, which tempered wise or climate wise is quite a bit different than Louisiana. Um, it's still, it's mid October now and it's like 70 out right now. Yesterday it was 80. So we're still in hurricane season. So the weather is still quite humid. I have my dehumidifier running full tilt at all times, which is why I can paint. I highly recommend if you live in a humid area like Louisiana or Florida, invest in a good large capacity dehumidifier. It will help so much. So you guys can kind of see what I meant about like it reactivated the colors and I lost my delineation and everything kind of bled into each other. And you know, you could fight that or you could just work with it and accept it and kind of figure out a way to get it to work in your favor, which is what I'm trying to do here. So anyway, uh, the weather is still really, really nice. And uh, so where Nashville fell in the central time zone is really more towards the eastern time zone border, whereas New Orleans is kind of in the middle. And then if you were in Chicago, you'd be basically at the other end. Central is a really large time zone. And so the sun would set really early in Nashville and my seasonal depressive disorder would start kicking in about now and I'd start really struggling with depression. Whereas in Louisiana, the sun's staying out a lot longer, the days are warmer, you actually do want to be outside. Not that I don't love fall weather, but fall in Nashville, you do get some beautiful fall days, but you get a lot of really gross rainy fall days. In fact, uh, usually Handmaiden Bound is held right about now. I got the notification on my phone if we weren't in the middle of COVID yet again. And uh, Handmaiden Bound is an outdoor event at the Southern Festival of Books for small publishers and zine artists like myself. And it's outside and you're sitting in a tent 
outside. And the three years I did Handmaid and Bound when it was at the Southern Festival of Books, it rained every year and it would be like 30 all day and raining and I got sick as a dog every year. So it's really quite different to be here in Louisiana where even if it's raining, it's not cold. And you know, I think some people think it rains all the time here. I would say it does rain every other day, but it might rain for like 30 minutes and then it's done for the day. And it's really not overcast most of the time. Most of the time the sun's out and the sky's pretty blue. So, you know, if you've ever thought about visiting Louisiana, I would highly recommend you come on down after COVID is, we've done something about COVID. I don't really know if we're going to have a vaccine or if we're just going to be wearing masks forever or if our sanitization technology is going to get better. I don't know. But humans are innovative creatures. We're going to figure something out. But once it's safe to travel again, I recommend you come down and visit. A lot of people come here during the winter because it's pretty warm down here and you'll get days that are in the 70s and in the 80s, which for people with arthritis like myself, that's great. It's so much easier for me to kind of deal with that. In fact, my last year in Nashville, it wasn't even the coldest year, but my arthritis was so bad last winter that I couldn't really paint at all. There were so many days where I couldn't paint because my hands would be locked up. So, you know, us moving to Louisiana, it was really, it was one of those things that really couldn't wait that much longer because I would just start losing three months of the year to the cold weather. And, you know, part of that is uh, because I'm from a place that is so much warmer. I know some of you who are like up north, up north are rolling your eyes like, oh, gee, she thinks that's cold. But, you know, I am acclimated to 100 degree days for most of the year, which is something a lot of people can't deal with. So, you know, some people deal well with cold. Some people deal better with hot. It's kind of what you're raised with and what you're comfortable with and moving to Nashville as an adult. I never really got comfortable with, you know, being iced into my house for weeks because I lived on a slope and then my driveway was a slope and they would just never get the trucks out to put down salt. All right, so the watercolor portion of this watercolor chat is now complete. I kind of feel like I overworked Kara's face a bit too much in this one. It's a little bit different than I would normally want to handle it. So next we're going to ink it and I'm inking with the standby, my favorite, the Tombow Funenosuke color brush pins. You guys have heard me laud praises on these many times. I'm always on the market for good alcohol marker safe and waterproof brush pins. And I always try to find, share what I find with you guys because I know many of you like Copic markers and you like watercolor and you want something that you can use either before you paint or after you paint like I'm doing here. I'm choosing to ink after I paint just because it allows me to kind of select my contrast rather than starting with my contrast and then adding my watercolor. So it's just a different way of handling the medium. And I have a lot of tutorials where I talk about lineless marker, um, a few where I talk about lineless watercolor. I probably should do a tutorial on lineless watercolor for you guys. It's one of my favorite styles and that's why I usually start with the colored leads to begin with. So anyway, I'm sitting in my bedroom recording narration for this, looking out the window at the magnolia tree, which is still green and covered in leaves, looking out on the grass, which is still green and verdant, and listening to the birds sing in the tree right beside me. And this is, this is what I grew up with. This is what I kind of missed all those years when I was living in other places. And that's not to say there's anything wrong with those places. And I'm glad I lived somewhere not Louisiana for a while. I think, frankly, I think a lot of people from Louisiana should try living somewhere else for a while. It really gives you a lot of perspective that you don't necessarily get growing up here. Uh, for example, I'd always kind of thought growing up here, just from things that my teacher said or that my parents said or that I saw on TV, I always kind of felt like we were just dumb in Louisiana and that uh, my education wasn't going to be as good as other people's. So if I wanted to compete nationally, I would have to be smarter than, you know, your average bear. 
And then I got to grad school and I met a lot of dumb people from lots of different places. And I kind of realized that standardized education is indeed standardized education. And it's not like I got a worse education going to a public school in Southeast Louisiana than somebody going to a large public school up in Ohio. Basically same education. And uh, you can just be ignorant and not care about the world around you no matter where you're from. That was an eye-opening experience for me because having grown up here, I'd never been anywhere else really. I'd been to Mississippi and I'd been to Texas, but I'd never really been to, I never really left the Gulf Coast. So I just didn't have a lot of experience with people from elsewhere in the world or elsewhere even in the U.S. And traveling has shown me that, you know, People are wonderful, and people are terrible, and things are beautiful, and things are sad. And I know that sounds like a given, but you know, when you experience most of that through the internet or through television, it's a much different experience in person. So if you've never been to Louisiana, allow me to sell you on Louisiana. Come check it out, find out for yourself, and make your own decisions. So now that this piece has been inked, I'm going to go in and add some white gouache highlights here and there just to kind of readjust the contrast and add a little bit of bounce back in. One of the things I like about watercolor illustration versus watercolor for fine art is that watercolor for illustration, specifically watercolor for comics, you do whatever makes the piece look good. Don't worry about it being proper don't worry about it being the way it's taught because that's not what it's being judged on what it's being judged on is its effectiveness as an illustration not whether or not you introduce watercolor pencils or gouache to add in back highlights so I really like how it's just a very low standard in that regard you know there's not as much gatekeeping as there can be in other fine art circles not that people consider illustration fine art but you know so to me it makes it much more accessible all right so we are finished painting inking and washing this rose hip tea watercolor illustration I've I'll never run out of things to say but for right now I think I've run out of things to say I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me and painting this with me. I hope your own artistic projects are going well, and I hope you guys are finding the inspiration you need to keep making art. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye, guys!